I had been approached with Steve Harvey before, but I didn't really feel like he was quite my cup of tea. And I had not worked with too many stand-ups. And, uh, but I ended up doing it with Stan Lathan came to me, and he's somebody who I've known for a long time and respect very much. And he was involved with Steve, and so that's how I got into that. Steve had just had a show with ABC that was canceled called Me and the Boys. And he was with Brillstein Gray, which was a big management company. And so they were trying to put together another vehicle for him. I felt like I was getting further and further from actors. You know, I was dealing with all these different musical people and rappers, and, and I wanted to work with actors. So it wasn't really anything against him. I just really wanted to work with actors. And um, he just, um, I didn't really know what I would do with him, because he's a very specific type of a person, and they wanted him to be, I forget what, they wanted him to be an English teacher. <laughs> I was like, I don't think you want Steve Harvey to be your English teacher. So I ended up, I felt like I had to meet him. So Stan and I flew to Chicago, and we met him, and he also had a posse. He had, there was Steve Harvey, and he had a big hat and a long black coat. And he had a bodyguard named Boomerang, who was about six foot eight, 300 pounds on one side. And then he had his manager, who was named Juan, lovely guy, really big, mean looking guy. <laughs> they were all walking through the airport. I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? But then when I sat down with them, you know, I, I, got, I sort of got him. And then I, that's when I came up with the concept for him. So you really tailored the character to yes, his personality. Yes, I really tailored it to him. I went off on my own. I told him I wanted him to be a uh, wa uh, kind of a washed up, you know, uh, singer. He was in a group like the Temptations or whatever. They they were called the High Tops, and uh, and now he was down on his luck and he was going to have to start teaching, but he could only teach music, and he also his. The girl he used to make fun of when he was a kid is now the principal of the school. So That's that great. was that premise. Working with Stan is great because what I, one thing I learned is that you have to have your, your, your area sort of, but you also have to allow other people to do what they do. And to me, the set belongs to the director. And... Um, and he knew how to work with all these guys because he uh, had deaf comedy tour. He, and so he knew all these comedians. He really gave me an insight into how to work with them. Also, uh, Steve was a more traditional kind of a guy. So dealing with a woman was a little different for him. So it was an interesting learning curve for me because it was a very male set. And... Uh, and Stan had his group of guys that he worked with. And of course, you know, I was pretty full of myself as well. <laughs> so it took a little transition to get everybody kind of on the same page. And there was a little bumpiness in the beginning because um, Steve felt like he should be the executive producer because other comics such as maybe Drew Carey or different people had had shows, but their shows were usually based on their work like uh, Everybody Loves Raymond was based on his stand-up. But Steve's show was not based on his stand-up. So that became kind of a, a point that I think he thought he was going to kind of railroad me over. And, I, you know, I'm not going to get railroaded. <laughs> so <laughs> once we got past that, and I think he also was very, he had not had a good experience doing sitcoms before. So I think he was a little bit, cautious. And um, he wanted me to bring on Cedric the Entertainer. So I said, fine. I met with Cedric, and I thought he was great. So we, I wrote a part for Ced. And uh, I remember there was one routine we wrote for them. And he didn't tell me this till after. <clears throat> so it, they were supposed to be two lobsters in an aquarium at a restaurant. And they were doing something in front of their class, and they were two lobsters. So they did this routine that we wrote for them, and it killed. It was really funny. 
And Steve came up to me after and he said, you know what? I didn't think that was going to work at all. And we were going to go out there and, and watch it tank. But it worked. And after that, he, you know, then he trusted me, I think. And he was really good. He really liked, uh, he really liked to have new stuff. You know, so we would always have like five jokes or something. We just, you know, we'd do a take and then throw in another one, throw in another one. So, but his rhythm, he had a very different rhythm than everybody else. So that was kind of hard.